If you're in Austin, Austin has been one of the hardest hits. I've seen pictures where the downtown is lit up and you got areas outside all the way to Bastrop and whatever that are completely in the dark. Uh, before you give us your expert opinion on what happened, what is your situation with your friends and family? Do they have heat? So we finally have power back. So we were one of the 4 million who originally lost power, you know, early Monday morning, and we didn't get it back for a couple days. And so, but as of now we have power and I'm, I'm, I'm glad I still have power and I have a warm place to sit. Although we're trying to keep it cool in here so that we can, you know, try to share the rest of the power with the rest of the state and get some of these folks back online. Yeah. And that's what the state is urging. I mean, listen, there, there, this is, the world of electricity generation and grids, I'm no expert, but diving in, Josh, the last couple of days has been mind-blowing in its complexity. The finger pointing is going everywhere in your mind from where you sit. Where was the real breakdown or was it literally the perfect storm of problems? You know, I've never seen all 254 counties of Texas under a winter storm warning at the same time. I mean, we do our best to plan for, for, for events, but I mean, this is beyond anything that I believe any reasonable person would have, you know, said would have happened at the same time. And so, I mean, I mean, the, the, it is somewhat of the perfect storm. I mean, you have a bunch of homes in Texas, you know, about 60% of homes in Texas use electricity for heating. The other 40% use natural gas. And the state grid is really built around our summer peaks. I mean, that's what we're kind of famous for. 4 p.m. August afternoon, it's 105 degrees outside. You're trying to you're trying to run every single air conditioner in the state, and that's what we are looking. That's what you know. That's what our system is set up for. But the difference between then and now is there's competition for that natural gas. In the summer, it's all going to power plants, and this time, you know, a lot of it's going through for heating. And there just was not enough to go around. Then we had freeze offs at wells and pipelines and. Power plants couldn't get cooling water. A third of our thermal fleet went offline. Some of our wind turbines did freeze. I mean, it was a perfect storm of things. We did. We could not match supply and demand. And when you cannot match supply and demand on an electricity system, you have to reduce. You, you have to. You have to shut people off, or the whole thing goes down. Yeah. And that can take weeks to turn back on. It'd be terrible. And, and it, you know, as people still freeze, it's become this this political football, which is just to be honest mm -hmm. with you, kind of gross. And people are pointing fingers, saying. Oh, it's the renewables. And then, the no, it's natural gas. Last night on the news with Shepard Smith, I showed our viewers the actual numbers. The decline mm -hmm. in power the two days of the storm versus the five-day average was down about 25 to 30% for all the major generation. Natural gas, mm -hmm. wind, uh, coal, and nuclear, only solar outperformed. The bottom line is everything kind of failed, right? To your point, you buy a cheaper turbine that doesn't have carbon blades or de-icing that we never thought the pipelines would get this cold. The coal literally froze in place and was unable. There are things we can mm -hmm. learn from this, Joshua, but this was, to your point, maybe not a hundred year storm, but darn close. Yeah, I mean, and you know, we had similar, you know, we had some similar weather back in 2011 and we did a commission, we did studies and we looked at, you know, what do we need to do? And we, we, we looked at what best practices were for some of these, some of these entities, um, you know, some of the gas, some of the gas lines, some of the cooling water intake lines. And we came up with a, a series of best practices, but we made it voluntary. And it appears that, you know, a lot of the, a lot of them didn't, you know, do those things. And so, I mean, I hope at this, I hope this time we make it compulsory. Yeah. I mean, you know, at some point we had, you know, over 4 million customers, you know, without power during the coldest that this state has ever been across it. And that's just unacceptable. And homes that are largely not insulated to handle this because you are a warm right. weather state. You try to keep the homes cool, not warm. And that's the problem, right? Spent 10 years ago. Hey, spend a lot of money to upgrade for things that may not happen, but once every 10 or 20 years, and a lot of people ignored it. And hopefully this mm -hmm. time things will get done. And maybe Joshua Urquhart will be forced to to share those pipes with some of the other grids, we will see. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.